But we're going to welcome in Evan Washburn, of course, CBS sports reporter and host, does a great job on the CBS crew with Ian Eagle and Charles Davis, two gentlemen, three gentlemen, I should say, Evan Washburn on Twitter. And as we say hi to Evan, hi, Evan, thank you for joining us. Uh, you were at Cincinnati over the weekend. You've got Bills Patriots coming up this week. That Seahawks Bengals game was interesting because it started like it was going to be a shootout and then both offenses kind of bogged down. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really, kind of exactly what we were thinking uh, when we when we got in the car afterwards. Man, we were get all set for something that was going to be in the 30s, and then it became true AFC North football and, and maybe some NFC uh, West football uh, in there as well. So it was it was an interesting game. It was it was an entertaining game in the sense that you felt like at any moment this was going to be the play that was going to decide it. Evan, you were close there on the sideline. What is your assessment of Joe Burrow's health? And I'm not saying from a medical standpoint, but your, your gut feeling, because he seemed like he was errant on so many throws that you would normally not see him miss on. Agreed, especially in the second half. And I think, one, that's a product of Seattle secondary. They, they look to have, I mean, I don't want to say they've rebuilt the Legion of Boom because they still got a ways to go to do that. But, man, they have the components to do so. Reek Woolen is special. His length is awesome. His ability to move at that size does remind you a little bit of Richard Sherman. They hit a home run in Witherspoon. He's everything you would want in a nickel corner, and he can do some other things as well. Trey Brown had the interception. So I think part of that is a product of what Seattle does to you defensively. But I think Joe Burrow, look, he's back to some degree because you saw it against Arizona. You saw it in the first drive and in portions of the first half against Seattle. But it's still a process for a guy who, for basically the last month and a half, outside of the last couple of weeks, has been extremely impacted by a serious calf injury. Evan Washburn here joining us on Sharp Money, of course, CBS sports reporter and host. And it's interesting because Gino. They had troubles in the red zone, but the Bengals' defense, Evan, which has been much maligned, constant pressure, constantly in the backfield there against Geno. No doubt. Look, I think, like most cases, I think coverage leads to pressure and vice versa. I mean, the two are so aligned. And I think in the early portion of the year, that young secondary, obviously Jeremy Bates and Von Bell no longer in that back end. Lou Anarumo's had to lean on some young guys and inexperienced guys playing big roles. And there were some growing pains, but it seemed to click after that first drive against Seattle to the point where I think Cam Taylor Britt's playing at a Pro Bowl level if he keeps it up and everybody else around him getting Shidabe Awuzie back was key. And that allowed the guys like Trey Hendrickson and Sam Humbard to get that extra half second. Cause you guys know that's all you need. If, if, if they can hold up in the back end just a little bit longer, um, that's all those guys need to wreak havoc or wreak havoc. And they did. And that's what surprised me. I thought Seattle might lean a little bit more on the run game because they were getting some good chunk yards for much of the first three quarters. Evan, you go to Foxborough this weekend at Gillette. You've got the Bills and the Patriots. How do you assess Buffalo and Josh Allen at this point? based on what transpired last year in that playoff game and where they're seeing right now in a competitive AFC? So I'm, I'm working my way through through my prep of Buffalo right now and, and re-watching Sunday night's game. Um, I don't put any stock in how last year ended. Um, that's kind of my rule now with most teams, just because as cliche as it is, I know names, and especially star names like Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs carry over, and at times coaches like – Sean McDermott carry over each year is its own environment. And it really, it's true. So it's hard to use last year's success or failures against the current, current team. Uh, But it's been, I would say relatively up and down for Buffalo. But the reality is when you look at them statistically and record wise, they're still in a great position as we get ready for week seven. And I think that's where, You can lean on guys that have been in this position before, Allen, Diggs, McDermott, some of the continuity, um, to think that, and I think Buffalo will be right there down the stretch. What concerns you mostly is the losses they've started to pile up defensively. And players and coaches never want to use injuries as excuses, but I think they are explanations, and that's a fair thing. It explains the why. And if Buffalo loses any more guys, 
because Milano and White and Jones up front, those are huge losses. That's going to be tough to overcome. And Buffalo heads Evan Washburn joining us, CBS Sports here on Sharp Money. And Buffalo heads to New England. Evan, you've been to Foxborough so many times in your career. It's going to be a completely different vibe this time, right? Because there's questions yeah. about Bill Belichick. There's questions about Mac Jones specifically coming out of the Raiders game now. It's going to be interesting to cover because it's going to be a different feel there at Foxborough this time. Yeah, it's, it's a great point. It really will be. We've talked about that as a crew kind of in our preparation for this game and our early meetings. And, and look, I, I don't like doing games when one team's one and five, one and six, whatever it is right now. I, I can't think about it, but um, that, that also provides an interesting layer to the way we'll kind of see things unfold. And we're not necessarily in the business of the, the conversation in the week leading up as much as you guys are. And, and, and so many are, we're about what happens in between those lines for the three hours from one to four or however long it goes. Uh, but you need to be prepared with all the conversation in the days leading up and in and, and some of the reporting that goes around both teams, but specific to New England and what they have going on. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. I've been there so many times. It's probably the place I've been to the most over the last 10 years because of how successful they've been. And, uh, this will be a relatively new experience in the sense that um, this is probably the, the worst record they've had of a New England game uh, we've done as a crew. Evan, you guys cover the a AFC pretty frequently. You look at this Chargers team last night. Where are you on them and Justin Herbert? It just seemed like they were disjointed throughout that football game last night. Give a ton of credit to Dallas, but still, they didn't look like they were hitting their stride at all. Agreed. I, I just think um, it, it feels like a, a broken record to some degree. And, and I'm speaking specific to this season, but I mentioned how years don't carry over. Um, it, it is a reality that this team on the, on the surface just looks like one that should be performing at such a higher level when it comes to consistency than this group has. And uh, I still think it's a team that no one would want to face, largely due to who they have under center. And I do think you're seeing Kellen Moore have a real impact on Justin Herbert's development. But their inability to finish games, I think it just continues to be uh, a reality for the Chargers. And they might go into a game here, I think it's next week, when they play Kansas City and uh, and look like one of the best teams in the NFL. But what I've come to understand is it's competitive stamina and your ability not to have moments of greatness or moments where you look special, but to consistently perform and find ways to win games and more importantly, not lose games. And I think for whatever reason, the Chargers have a hard time doing that this season and in previous seasons under this regime. And we're trying, Evan, to find the teams that are legit. It's interesting. I thought Lamar and the Ravens were awesome against the Titans in London. You had the Ravens in back-to-back -back weeks. They went to that Cleveland defense and played awesome and then gave the game away in Pittsburgh. What did you take away from covering Baltimore? I think Baltimore has all the components necessary to be right there uh, down the stretch in the AFC. And I think what you saw in Pittsburgh – and you actually saw it in the Indianapolis game, too, at home, and they lost to the Colts, a game they had no business losing, is just a better understanding of situational football and, and not making mistakes that are going to lose you the game. Because when Baltimore, and you can see this, like the way they start games and when they're efficient and when they're playing well, they have all the talent necessary and all the key areas of the field to, again, be one of the best teams in the NFL. But the margin in this league, as we know, is so slim – that you can't do things that beat yourself. And I think you saw that, again, in the Colts game with some of the things they did down the stretch, and then especially in the Pittsburgh game. The turnovers are one thing, but the situation of football at the end of the first half, losing, you know, you're, you're not putting points on the board there. Um, those things will come back to get you. And I think if Baltimore, and maybe they have, learns those lessons in the first five to six weeks of a season, you're in a much better spot than uh, where you are when it can end your season in November and December. Have a great call in New England, Evan. Evan Washburn, CBS Sports. We enjoyed it. Thank you very much. You got it, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a vsun Pro subscriber today.